Hey, what's up guys? It's Marissa and I am back for another book two video and today I want to go ahead and do my October wrap up and I know this is going to be a little weird because I'm doing my desktop share again but I really 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 enjoy using my Excel files and I thought I would put that side by side with my Goodreads and kind of show you what kind of books I was reading this month and how many books I ended up with. So let's get into it. So overall, I read 15 books during the month of October. Three of those books were Audible, 10 of those books were Physicals, and two of those books were on Kindle. And that's really not, I mean, 15 books really isn't the best that I've ever done. It's kind of actually a lot less since I started book two, but I did end up reading almost 5,000 pages, which is a pretty good month for me. So most of the books I read were pretty lengthy. So anyway, I'm going to begin by the first one I'm going to be talking about is Body of Proof. That was on Audible, and that was a true crime podcast about a woman in Scotland who ended up going missing, and this guy has been in prison for her murder for quite a while. And he's maintained his innocence this entire time. And so basically the True Crime prod Podcast was trying to go and talk to him and figure out what really happened. Now, I did really enjoy this. True Crime definitely interests me, um, not as far as like reading it. I uh, but listening to it in a podcast format is really really interesting to me and I really enjoy that. But this one I just I, I get it's an interesting story but this whole time I'm thinking all right you know let's get to the bottom of this let's find some new information let's figure out you know what what's going to happen and I was pretty disappointed because no spoilers or anything but you really didn't get much new information honestly they were just like rehashing the entire case going at it from a fresh set of fresh set of eyes a fresh perspective and you really didn't get much new out of it, which was pretty disappointing to me. So I ended up only giving it three stars. It was only six hours long, and I guess the guy's still in prison. The next book that I read was Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin, and that I read in physical format, and I had heard I had heard pretty mixed reviews about this, but it was pretty, pretty hyped on book two before it actually came out. And I saw this at the store one day, and I was like, all right, I got to pick this up. So I did a whole review on this, so I'm not going to go too into depth with it, but essentially it is about a witch and a witch hunter who end up being forced to be married and they fall in love. But it's more of a, a enemies to lovers trope in there, and the witchcraft does kind of take a back seat for the majority of the book. It really doesn't come into play until the last like quarter of the book, but... I understand where the author is going because she's leading into the second book. So I thought it was really good and I did end up giving it four stars. That was 513 pages as, as we can see here. So the next one was The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones that I read in a physical format and that I ended up giving four stars. And I also did a review on this one so I won't go too into depth but essentially there is a girl who her and her family are grave diggers and they live next to a graveyard and and essentially both of her parents end up passing away <clears throat> and she and her brother and her sister end up having to run the graveyard and basically survive on their own and some things happen and the girl ends up having to go on a quest and I really did think it was it was a pretty good book. I really enjoyed it. I was really surprised by it. It was definitely fresh new content. It wasn't something that I had read before. Um, so yeah, I did enjoy that. I did end up giving it four stars and I believe this is a standalone book. I don't think there's anything coming after this one. So the next one that I read was Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell and that I ended up giving five stars. This is the sequel to Carry On, of course, by Rainbow Rowell. And I thought this one was good. It was... I have to say, honestly, I think it's better than, better than Carry On. And 
I think it was because Carry On reminded me so much of Harry Potter that it was just, it was too, too similar to it. But Carry On is what got me hooked on, on the series. And I really, I ended up really enjoying it. It's a fast paced, very fun read, um, basically a road trip. And you definitely won't regret reading the book for sure. So the next one, of course, is The Philosopher's Stone. And this one, I ended up, this is a horrible picture of this book, by the way. I'm I'm going to end up throwing up a picture of my edition, which is the Ravenclaw House Edition 20th Anniversary one. But I ended up reading this because I was kind of in a reading slump and I really, really needed to get out of it. And October is always a time of year for some reason that I just decide that I am in the mood to read Harry Potter every single year. Not that I couldn't read it any other time of the year, but you know what I mean. It's just like, tis the season. It just makes me nostalgic for it. So, of course, I gave this book a five stars because, you know, it, nostalgia and all that. So, the next one is The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. And this one I listened to on Audible and I gave it five stars. And this is very much an anti-hero story. Uh, Locke Lamora is a thief. It's basically like a no good. and But he has some very high ideals. Him and his friends are... They do good even though they also do bad. And it is very... <laughs> They swear a lot. There's a lot of, you know, brash humor in there. And honestly, I really, really love that because I think Scott Lynch did an amazing job with it. It doesn't come off as trying too hard and it doesn't come off as too crude. I think it just lends the right amount of humor to it. And more than once, this book had me laughing out loud. This series is amazing and I am still continuing on with it right now because... Ugh just so good. So of course I ended up giving this one five stars as well and that was a 22 hour book so not too shabby. So the next one is Anna of Cleve by Allison Weir. This one I read on Kindle and this is in the Six Tudor Queen series. This is number four of course because Anna of Cleve being Henry VIII's fourth wife and I really enjoy this series by Allison Weir because she has such a flair for writing historical fiction and she really gives a life to these long dead historical figures that is quite amazing. She really, she takes their story and weaves in backstories and personality traits that are just, they're so realistic and, and I really, really enjoy reading it. There was a lot of times where I did kind of get bored with this book just because Anna of Cleve, while she's kind of interesting, she's very much like a, she was the figure in history. She was the only wife of Henry VIII to actually consent to a divorce, like without any trouble. So she kind of came off as like meek and mild and, you know, just too willing, I guess. So I did get bored a little bit with that, but it wasn't because of the author. It was just because of who, who Anne of Cleves is. So Anyway, I did end up giving this book a four stars because it definitely wasn't my favorite in the series, but it was still really good. So the next three, I guess I'm going to talk about these in succession, were Shadow and Bone, Storm, Siege and Storm, and Ruin and Rising, all by Lee Bardugo. And these are the Shadow and Bone trilogy books. And I never read these when they originally came out. I have only recently heard about these. Um, I think they're pretty good. I gave all of them, no, I gave the first two four stars, and then I gave the last one five stars, and I think the first two books are good, but I think being early on in Lee Bardugo's writing career, they were, they fell a little more flat than some of her later writing does. Uh, because I've, of course, read Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, and I absolutely adore those books, and I just thought that maybe these would be more like that as far as the writing style. And you can definitely see her writing style in there, but it, I just don't think it was as eloquent as her later books, which is understandable. And these were more young, young adult versus you know, the traditional young adult books. So while I really enjoyed these, they they definitely weren't my favorites, and I don't think I'll be rereading them. So that was Shadow and Bone. Here's Siege and Storm, and this one's Rune and Rising, of course. 
And then the next one that I read was Hocus Pocus and the All New Sequel by A.W. Jantha. And I did a whole review on this, of course, up on my channel. And I absolutely adore Hocus Pocus the movie. And I thought the sequel was good. It wasn't great, but it was good. I didn't hate it. And I thought it was definitely more of more geared towards a younger audience. Um, which I didn't didn't really care for, but I think the reasoning behind that is that people are a lot more sensitive today when it comes to younger kids reading things in books. And the original Hocus Pocus on TV was very filled with sexual innuendos and, you know, lots of things that people are a lot more sensitive about today. So I just, I don't, I didn't enjoy it as much as the original story. So the next one that I read was the Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Moss. And that one I ended up giving three stars. I... The thing is, is that I really did not enjoy this first book all that much. Um, Selena Sardothian, I, I like her as a character, but, you know, this whole time they're like, oh, she's this well-known assassin and she's a badass. I didn't see that in this entire first book. I did not see that at all. And it kind of ticked me off. Like, I think, honestly, if I hadn't already purchased a used set of this entire series, I probably would have stopped reading after this book. Because I just didn't, I didn't really connect with her as a character. So the next book that I read was Red Seas Under Red Skies by Scott Lynch. And this is the follow-up in the, the book two in the General Ambassador series by, you know, with Locke Lamora in it. And this one is pirate-filled. Um, the first one was more like in the city, you know, thieves, yada, yada, yada. This one was all pirates and being on ships and oh, oh my God. It was so good. So, so good. I just, there is love and heartbreak and death and loss and oh man, this and lots more gratuitous swearing, which absolutely couldn't, couldn't ask for better. So I, this book, I ended up giving five stars. It was 26 hours long, so it was a chunker, but it is definitely worth it. Next book that I finished, I actually just finished a little while ago. That was Crown of Midnight, and that's Throne of Glass number two. And this one, I liked a lot better than the first one. Um, I ended up giving this one four stars versus the three stars that I gave the first one, because you get to see Selena as an assassin. You see the the badass assassin part of her, which is what they kept touting in the first book, but never really showed. So I really enjoyed this one much better, and I'm hoping that the third, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh books really, really pick up more of that, because I think I'll enjoy those a lot more. So then this other one, I actually just finished a little while ago too, and that is The Witch of Willow Hall by Hester Fox. And that one I read on Kindle. And I actually got this one free from Amazon because um, they do at the beginning of the month with your Prime membership, you can get like two, two free Kindle books or something. And this was one of those that I just happened to pick up because it started talking about the Salem Witch Trials and yada, yada, yada. So I'm not going to do a full review on this on my channel, so I'll go into a little more depth about it, but you are following this girl, Lydia, and her two sisters, Catherine and Emmeline, and basically they come to this new house of that their father bought called Willow Hall, and you find out that there was some kind of scandal where they used to live, so they had to move out into the country, and basically her their mother just like does not care. She's like checked out. And their father is so embroiled in work that he barely has time for anybody, let alone himself. So the girls are basically just like fending for themselves. And you start to see a couple of the girls are developing like witchcraft powers almost, but it's done in a very subtle way. Um, there is some ghosts in here. There is some main character death in here. And there is some seriously slow burning romance that will just, I was not expecting. And it honestly, it really swept me off my feet. I think this book probably had my most favorite romance that I have read in any book this year, uh, probably ever, just because it was, it was so slow burning and so real. 
and gritty and it wasn't like it wasn't like most books where something something seemingly insignificant happens and you know one of the two lovers is like oh no we can't get away from me you know it was like you know listen we're gonna work through our problems and you know talk it out like adults and yada 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 so anyway this was a really really good book um as a romance I think the rest of the story weaves into it pretty well. Um, at times it does kind of take a backseat to the whole interwoven love story of it all. But overall, I thought it was really good. I ended up giving this book a four stars. So that is everything I read. Oh, and also for my 2019 reading challenge, as you can see, I have hit 100 books in 2019 on the very last day of October. So maybe I'm going to have to go change my goal and bump that up to maybe 120. I think I'll hit that one too, but we shall see. So I did, I do have to say, I did DNF a book this month. And that was Nocturna by Maya Motain. And honestly, I got 173 pages into that book. And that's normally the point past where I DNF books. But I got 173 pages in and I just was not connecting with the characters. And I I didn't care about the story. I was just like, oh my god, when is this going to be over with? I I don't know what it is. I may pick it back up at some point just to give it another try because I know other people have liked it. I, I know they have. I've seen other people review it on booktube, but I just, at the time, I just didn't care for it. So I guess that is about all I have for you guys this month. I'm going to go expand this back out and give you a little bit of a look at my graphs. So as you can see, it's definitely not my best reading month as far as pages go, but it's pretty up there. It's more than last month, and I actually read more books last month, but more pages this month. So as far as audible hours go, only 54. So I mean, it's pretty good. It's it's second in my little chart here. Um, as far as stars, I'm still giving out mostly five-star ratings, um, with four and three definitely coming in there, and two and one, I don't tend to give those because either I DNF the book, or I just tend to give it a three. And then, of course, here's my little graph on how many books I've read this month. As you can see, I only read 15. Um, I did unhaul, so I did unhaul 12 books this month, which was pretty good for me. Um... One of them was a box set, which is why I unhauled quite so many, because I ended up getting rid of a whole box set full of books. And of course, my physical books is still coming in first as far as the book formats. So I guess that is all I got for you guys today. I hope everybody had a wonderful reading month just like I did, and I will see you in November.